So they probably wanted skin tag, and this is just tangential sectioning, quite pretty, right? But just an artifact of how we cut it in the lab, because it's cutting at an angle. So they wanted a um, fleshy, skin-colored polyp. So skin tag versus nevus. But what we see instead is a spindle cell lesion with pink collagen in the background. Some loose kind of edematous areas. Spindle cells are relatively haphazard, bland. Some of them are kind of pointed at one end and rounded at the other. Some are kind of like buckled or bent like that. See how it's just kind of curved or like this. So they have like a little, little, um, where did it go? Like a little bend in the middle. Like I like to think like a Coke, Coke can, like if you pop the top of a Coke can and how the little tab, like suddenly now has got like a little bend in the middle, but that's what these cells look like. So that's a characteristic, uh, cytologic feature of Schwann cells. So these are Schwann cells. At least some of the cells here are Schwann cells. We also have a sprinkling of mast cells. A little fried egg right there. Oh, there's a better one up here. Right there. And they, depending on the, mast cells can vary from case to case, depending on how much of their granules they have left. When they have a lot of granules, they can look really kind of dark blue um, or purple. As they lose granule, they, they become kind of more of a fine light blue. And the granularity sometimes can be seen if you flip the condenser, probably not on here. But scattered mast cells, Schwann cells, look, little tiny, tiny baby nerve fibers, little nerve nerve twigs almost. So I guess it's a little bigger than a twig, but it's a little nervelet, like a tiny, tiny little baby nerve, right? And so increased numbers of very small nerves mingled in here and probably some fibroblasts and perineurial cells. So all that put together, this is a neurofibroma, okay? So great, that's good. Neurofibroma. So why am I showing you? Well, neurofibroma with a bonus. There's kind of scattered cells that look pleomorphic, but actually closer up, they're actually some multinucleated cells. So they're kind of multinucleated cells scattered, these kind of almost floret cells. Some of them have like a ring or flower arrangement, like that one kind of does. So sometimes you can see multinucleated floret like cells in neurofibromas. Sometimes you can see actual scattered, big pleomorphic atypical cells in neurofibromas. And um, that, that can be seen in association, particularly with neurofibromatosis type 1. I don't think of it as a definitive finding, but when I see um, uh, pleomorphic cells, and I think the fluoret cells too have been suggested to be more common in uh, NF1 patients. So I do think about NF1 in that setting. But, uh, but even though these are weird looking, is the neurofibroma is totally benign, even with scattered pleomorphism. And I have a much longer in-depth video about uh, atypia and um, uh, in, in neurofibromas in the setting of NF1 and um, how to uh, think about malignant transformation, which almost never happens in the skin, even in NF1 patients. But I've got a whole long video about that, about NF1 and, neuro, and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor. So, ooh, and while we're here, a little bonus, look at that. That's a lymphatic channel with a valve. Sometimes you get the valve where you can actually see the opening, but here we're seeing that little thin leaflet, and here's another one there. Those are valves. Isn't that cool? It's real fun when you get the cut and you can see both leaves and the little the little opening in the center, but you know when you see those, you go buy a lottery ticket that day because you're like extra lucky. So, All right, so anyway, fluoret-like cells in a neurofibroma, and I don't recall if this patient actually had NF1 or not.